Thank you for your interest in working with us and, and joining us today. Our goal is to give everyone a little background about the Bush Foundation um, and then some more specifics about the position and our hiring process. Um, I'm Kim, I'm the Talent Learning uh, Talent Learning Evaluations Associate, and I will be running the logistics for today's video. And I'm also a close partner with Stephanie and Joni in this hiring process. Um, Stephanie, Joni, do you want to introduce yourselves? Absolutely. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. I'm Stephanie Andrews. I'm the Talent Learning and Evaluation Director here at the Bush Foundation. I do a lot of different things that are pretty great. Love to talk to you about them, but I'll just focus here today on the role that I'm playing in this hiring process. And so working closely with Joni and Kim on the HR side of things, making sure that hopefully you have a great experience as part of this process. And then with Carrie, as Carrie in her role as the hiring manager, making sure again that we're we're getting the information that we need, that you need, so that we can end up with the, the right person in this job. So again, thanks again. Turn it to you, Joni. Hi, my name is Joni Chasich. I'm the talent HR manager here at Bush Foundation. Um, probably the newest member of the HR talent team. Um, I work very closely with Kim and Stephanie with hiring onboarding um, and policies. Nice to meet you. Awesome. And then we also have Carrie here, who is the hiring manager for this search. Carrie, do you want to introduce yourself as well? Yeah. Hi, I'm Carrie Ruth. I'm the communications director, and uh, this position will be part of our team. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, Stephanie, I'll throw it over to you. Yeah. I, I always love getting to tell you a little bit about the Bush Foundation. We think it's important to start off with just an introduction to, to who the Bush in, in the Bush Foundation is, because even if you know a lot about what the Bush Foundation does, people don't always know about who the people were behind this, um, the foundation that we work at. So we sometimes say that the Bush is, our Bush is not from the beans or the beer or the presidents. Um, the Bush in the Bush Foundation is this Bush that you see here on the screen, Archibald Bush, Archie, um, shown here with his wife, Edith. Um, Archie was born in Granite Falls, Minnesota, and his asthma kept him from the family business of farming. And so instead, he became a bookkeeper, which is really, in the end, a pretty good thing for this region. He worked at a, a small firm that was then called Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing. Over the decades, that, that company became 3M that you know today. And he built wealth as 3M grew. And so um, with that wealth, he and Edith created the Bush Foundation in 1953. And since that time, the Bush Foundation has invested more than a billion dollars in individuals and communities in this region. A pretty amazing legacy um, that Archie and Edith left. Um, as the next slide says, um, just tells you a little bit about um, how we operate, what we do at the Bush Foundation. And so um, we, we, what we do, we invest in great ideas and the people who power them in Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, and the 23 Native nations that share that geography. Um, you hear that probably a tagline on, on public radio and other media outlets around uh, the region. Um, it, our, it's both our tagline and our strategy. It is how we advance our purpose, how we think about what we do. Um, the region in which we work, as you know, is really large, really diverse, and diverse in every way that you can imagine. The why of what we do it is to inspire and support creative problem solving, and importantly, within and across sectors. So trying to think about what is the place where people need to connect, need to work across um, lanes of what they do so that we can uh, make the region better for everyone. And everything that we do at the Bush Foundation, we, we kind of look back to this why we do it and um, think about how it ties all of our work together. The how we do it, uh, really important to talk about uh, the fact that we really um, want to make sure that we're looking at the problems that we're working on coming from communities. So we work through open grant making programs, community innovation, Bush Fellowship, ecosystem grants, um, to support efforts to develop, test, and spread great ideas that will make the region better for everyone, and to inspire, equip, and connect people to more effectively lead change. So you hear there, um, just what we said in the very beginning about investing in great ideas and the people who power them, looking at ideas, looking at people, and how we build capacity, how we develop leaders in ecosystems and organizations and individuals. And so the next slide 
is the we. When we talk about the we, and I say, we do this, here's the we, who does that? Um, this is from a photo of our, it's a photo of our staff retreat um, last month. Um, currently, if you counted, there are about 33 people, um, 33, 34, depending on the day, uh, with a with a big mix of backgrounds. Um, this slide makes me smile because it is it was a fun day. Uh, we try to have a lot of fun in the middle of doing um, serious work. Um, and the mix of people on our staff um, make it the most dynamic place I've ever worked. Um, as we try really intentionally to bring in people from different sectors, again, you think of that within and across sectors that you saw in the last slide, we try to represent that on our staff too. And so people come from a whole mix of places, consulting, government, the arts, the law, nonprofits, some, but not most, uh, bringing experience from other foundations. Um, that makes it an amazing place to be. We're really a learning organization. We are trying to figure out always how can we um, learn about ourselves? How can we learn about the, the region in which we work, the issues that we work on so that we can serve this region as best we can. So it's a pretty amazing place to be. I always uh, learn more about everything, whether it's restaurant recommendations or really big questions around how do you um, disrupt systems or put great evaluation processes in place. I learn more than I ever could have believed from talking with my colleagues here. So um, maybe though we'll take a little bit of a, a more specific question to my colleagues here that so that you can see the range of experiences that um, we represent, just the four of us, five of four of us, five of I can't even count four of us. Um, I actually have a background in finance and math, but you wouldn't know it from the way I handle that. Um, I'll start by just saying, um, before I came to the Bush Foundation in 2010, so 13 years ago now, um, I was working for Minnesota state government and I worked there for quite a long time um, in the, the state's um, executive budget office. But what that means is that I worked with governors um, from three or four different administrations trying to help them make some great decisions about how they um, use the money uh, coming into the state treasury. I worked on technology and workforce issues and education with education and higher education were the main focus of a lot of my work. Um, but the common thread with the work I do now is really thinking about how do you decide from all of these amazing things that you can do, how do you figure out what to do? And probably the part of my job I love the most, how do you create a great culture so that people can really thrive in it? And that's the work in talent and HR and learning that I do with Joni and Kim. Uh, Carrie, let me stop talking. Would love to hear from you. <laughs> great. I love Stephanie's sense of humor. It always cracks me up. <laughs> so that's one of the fun things about working here. Um, so a little bit about me. I've been at the Bush Foundation for about a year and a half. And while I'm new-ish, um, to Bush, I'm not new to philanthropy. So I've worked in philanthropy for a while. Right before this, I was working at the Polad Family Foundation, doing similar work. Um, and then some time ago, I was um, also at the St. Paul and Minnesota Foundation. So have um, quite a background in different types of um, foundations, um, but also just have throughout my career worked in some communications role across a lot of different sectors. So I've worked overseas, I've worked in and possibly seems like the opposite of, of what we do here, um, working in um, banking um, and investment banking and started out my career as a journalist. So just have had a wonderful sort of mix of different opportunities um, throughout that have all fed into uh, the work that I do now with Bush. So I will turn it over to Joni. Thanks, Carrie. Uh, so I started here at Bush uh, as I mentioned this past summer uh, as the talent HR manager here at the foundation. And prior to arriving here at Bush, I worked uh, a little over two years in the government sector with the VA. And I worked as a loan specialist assisting veterans avoid home foreclosures during COVID-19. Um, the work was very enjoyable, very humbling. I was in direct service to helping veterans um, prevent for foreclosure during a very tough time. And then prior to working at VA, I was actually at McKnight Foundation in philanthropy for seven years. Um, I worked there as the foundation's HR generalist and then as the comp and benefits manager, um, doing a lot of impactful uh, work in DEI and HR um, during a time of transition and change. Um, overall, I really, I'm really drawn to the public sector and philanthropic mission-driven work. 
advancing public good and really with a core focus on instilling equity throughout the organization. So I'll hand it off to Kim. Thanks. It's so fun hearing, I've done a few of these and it's fun hearing like each hiring manager whenever they're on, hearing their background because I something that doesn't always come up in everyday conversation. So that's cool. Um, I'm again, Kim. I am, uh, I have a background kind of more in nonprofit management. Edu like my education is my uh, in nonprofit management. And then I started off in the nonprofit area um, working at the Eastside Freedom Library as their operations person, um, dealing with some finance, dealing with a lot of stuff. It's a, It was a small team. So dealing across, you know, teams and what we were doing and across work. Um, and I'm fairly fresh to the foundation. It's like maybe my fourth-ish, fifth-ish, started in the summer, <laughs> um, few months here. And it's been really great. It's been really cool to see a different side of, you know, nonprofit work and into this philanthropy side of things. Um, and most of my experience, my background has been more in an educational, like focus, focus in my own education. And so it's been really great because I feel like I'm really growing in this space and I'm in that prime mind to like grow and learn and absorb from everyone and their expertise. Um, and yeah, and I think it's, that's, that's me. <laughs> All right, I think then I'll throw it to Joni, I believe, for the operating values that we have here at Bush. Thanks, Kim. So these are our five operating values. You'll see them on our website and also the job posting. They are to help us guide our decisions that we make every day at the foundation and are a big part of how we operate. We look for people who can embrace and demonstrate the values in both their work and with our staff. So the first is to spread optimism. We really encourage everyone to internally and externally, externally to not only think big, but promote positive, supportive interactions with each other. Second one is we work beyond ourselves. We are a collaborative bunch and share a lot of, uh, share a lot of information with each other. We are also intentional with how we lead and when to follow. The third one is everybody matters strive to have very fair, open, inclusive processes. Some of the current org-wide and individual work is to reevaluate our equity approach and that we're doing that work right now. Every role is part of the equity work, which is core to the foundation as we move forward. And you'll be part of that um, ongoing journey. Uh, the fourth is to steward well. We remind ourselves of the foundation's rich history and thoughtful thoughtfully built legacy. We also hold ourselves to high standards of integrity and accountability. And most, if not all staff know about Archie and Edith's story and how the foundation foundation grew after it was established back in 1953. And then the fifth one is more good every year or Miggy is the acronym. We are a learning organization and we exist with this core mission. We believe that each year we can grow and learn and do more good which I think makes us a very progressive philanthropic organization. I'll hand it off to Carrie. Great, thanks, Joni. Um, so excited to introduce you to our communications team, or I always refer to us as comms for short. Um, the, teams include, the team includes myself, um, the director who oversees strategy and operations and manages the team. Um, we also have our colleague, Tammy Nolan, who's our communications officer. Um, she leads comms work that supports our core programs and the stories we tell about them. Um, and then we'll have a communications associate, another colleague who will help lead uh, the work that supports our community engagement efforts um, and provide admin support for the comms team. We're a small and nimble team and we work with a handful of vendor partners who provide additional capacity that supports our PR and outreach work, 
our digital communications, and our website. So we're super excited to complete the team with a new comms associate. Uh, next slide. So um, a little bit about what we do. Simply put, we're responsible for amplifying and promoting our work um, and that of our grantees, fellows, partners, and other work that we support. Um, we create and share compelling stories that help advance our organizational purpose. Um, and we equip staff um, and board as well with the tools, information, and structures they need to engage people throughout the region. Um, like I said, our board members also are our primary audience for our communications and something we always have in, in mind um, as we're thinking about things. Um, and then as a team, we're able to use lots of different tools to communicate our work. So some of those include our website, our e-newsletter, uh, media sponsorships, and social media. And we're always keeping an eye out for new tools um, and new ways of communicating. Next slide. Um, so a little bit about who we're looking for in this particular position. So again, we're really excited about this opportunity and the contributions this role will make. Um, and it will take a particular mix of skills and work styles to be successful. Um, so we've provided lots of uh, details in the job description itself. So I just wanted to highlight a few things here. Um, so someone who likes variety in their day-to-day -day work, um, will really thrive in this role. Our team works across the entire organization and across lots of different projects of work. So every day, within a single day, you'll work on multiple um, different things. Um, also, if you're an organizer of things and people, we wanna hear from you. Um, this position is responsible for keeping lots of trains running on time. We're a super collaborative organization and the comms team seeks out lots of input and feedback um, and acts on that. So someone who likes to connect with people, learn from them and build consensus will be really energized in this role. Um, and a good communicator seems kind of obvious being on the communications team, but we don't take that for granted. Um, we're seeking someone who's a good listener, understands different audiences, um, both external and internal, our colleagues, um, and is willing to share their thoughts and opinions. So anything else anyone would add to this opportunity, excuse me, my allergies are <laughs> you know. Nope, we're good. All right, we'll jump here to the key responsibilities. So Again, um, just wanna highlight a few things. You can um, check the job description for more detail around this, but a big part of this role involves some project management or coordination of work um, that supports mostly our grant making team, but also others doing lots of work um, around engaging the people and communities throughout our region. Um, and to do this, you'll work in close alignment uh, with different teams to support a variety of projects and programs, um, like I talked about. Um, and this will require a, an ability to build strong relationships with colleagues and keep track of lots of details. Um, another aspect of the project management work that's important is being able to take direction from different people and help coordinate a workable solution. So it's taking lots of different input pieces and, and trying to kind of come to um, some sort of consensus um, around that. And it doesn't mean you have to create the solution, but you might need to synthesize those options and help others um, make an informed decision. So you'll have lots of support from me and Tammy and other colleagues in doing that work. Um, you'll also help support specific community facing activities um, with the, the Bush Fellows um, and some of our grant partners. Another significant part of this role is coordinating operations um, of our single inquiry line, which we call Contact Hub. It's kind of a front door of the foundation, and we want anyone coming through it to have a really great experience. So you'll help schedule and coordinate the grant making team members who staff our Contact Hub, um, and that rotates, um, and then help coordinate any materials or tools that are needed to support them. Um, so the other way that we use our contact hub too is it's a significant source of data and uh, analysis and input for us. So we gather insights and information from it 
um, to in better inform how we do our grant making as well as our communications so that we can be more effective and help reach more people. Um, and last but not at all least um, is the administrative support um, that's needed for the comms team. This is really important work um, that ensures we're operating effectively as a team and it's dynamic work. You might be helping me update our budget um, processing an invoice, um, organizing a staff photo shoot, or helping someone find a photo, um, or coming up with fun ideas for what we like to call bush swag. So fun little items for staff and, and our friends that we hand out, like uh, water bottles and notebooks and tote bags and things like that. Um, so the other thing that I will say about that piece of the work is don't worry if you've never worked on a budget. We have great colleagues in finance um, who will train you and make it easy to learn. So I, that's my bit. I think I'm turning it over to someone. I think, yeah. did we did we jump through another slide? Yeah, did I lose track of? No, I think there's a, the key skills and experience slide used to be there. I'm going to just say a <laughs> yes, word or thanks. two about what um, the posting talks about, about what we're looking for in somebody in this role. And so I don't, we don't need to go through it. I think the posting does a good job at describing that. Um, just want to highlight a couple of things. So one of the things that the posting talks about is three years of experience in a comms focused role. Um, probably the most important part of that is the next um, the next piece of that that talks about within a complex organization, because while we are relatively small, only 35 or so people, we're really integrated. And so as Carrie has been highlighting, a lot of the things that we end up um, doing um, require the person in this role, everybody on the comms team, to work across, to work with within and between. And so really looking for somebody who understands that need to um, to be kind of paying attention to lots of things and coordinating with lots of people. Um, that also means, I think one of the things just to highlight about, about the person that Carrie is looking for in the team is really focusing on that, that um, enthusiasm, that curiosity, um, that adaptability and flexibility, because there's a lot of really cool stuff in this job. And it also means um, that we're looking for a, a couple of different um, skill sets that last line around willingness to take on new opportunities and challenges with curiosity, energy, enthusiasm, initiative. It's so important that somebody isn't looking for a playbook. This is a new position. We'll talk about that a little bit more at the end, but it's, it's, it's take some places that we've had somebody in the role, add some different things in the engagement work, especially. And so we're really looking for someone who is excited by that and isn't wanting to be told how it's been done before. The Bush Foundation is a dynamic place anyway, as we're always trying to adapt to what our community needs. Um, and the person in this role can be looking at a lot of different things. So really looking for somebody who brings their really strong project management and communication skills into um, this really cool role. It's probably all that I need to say. And then we'll go on to the next slide on nuts and bolts. And I think that I'm going to Am I right that I'm going to keep talking? I'm going to keep talking for a little bit. <laughs> so um, the the hourly rate here of 39.80. Again, we try to be really specific so you know what this is all about. Um, I'm going to say just a little bit about how we approach pay um, because it's really a part of our equity strategy. Um, again, we heard from Joni early on around our operating values and the way that equity and anti-racism and inclusion work really um, in, is embedded throughout the organization. You see it show up here in our approach to pay because one of the things that we we want to do is make sure that we're benchmarking against um, what other positions in similar organizations, what they would pay. So we do a fair amount of work with an external consultant to make sure that we're looking at what a fair rate is for this job, and then we pay it. And so we don't want you to have to come in and negotiate. Um, we know that that is how disparities actually get embedded into pay structures, because um, sometimes people are better at negotiating than others. And we know that people who have been well served in the past by dominant structures tend to be the ones who are comfortable negotiating and those who are not tend to not do that. We don't want to start off um, in a place that we then have to figure out how to fix later from a pay equity perspective. 
So what that means is that we also want to make sure that your first experience with Carrie is not trying to negotiate a salary. Um, we know nobody likes that. So want you to know that um, if you were to come into this job, um, the, the hourly rate, um, which translates into um, approximately $82,794, um, that is the salary that you would, um, you would be offered. Um, I'll stop there, I think, and turn it on over to Joni. Sure. Thanks, Stephanie. Thank you. I love the comp philosophy. So continuing on that, the benefits that we offer are, are very generous. Um, we have a retirement uh, retirement contribution and match from the, from the employer side, medical, dental, and FSA plans, a, a very well thought out holiday um, hours, vacation, and sick leave. We also offer professional development funds. Um, again, we are a, truly a learning organization, which is really core to what we do. The MIGI operating value more good every year. We put a lot of attention again to this. Uh, every individual has an individual development plan or a MIGI plan, uh, which requires individuals to really intentionally and thoughtfully think about what knowledge and skills they need to exhibit to be more impactful in both what they do in their roles and the foundation and the world in general. Well, thanks, Joni. I'll talk a little bit about our work environment. Um, so we have an office space in downtown St. Paul. Um, most of our staff is based in the Twin Cities. Um, we have a few people that are kind of in the other parts of our region, um, mostly on the grant making team. But uh, so we do offer full support for home office setup and we are hybrid. And so um, our every week we people come in person on Wednesdays with an additional day once a month to do really intentional org wide work together since we are a super collaborative cross, uh, organization that works cross foundation, this uh, cross teams, this uh, time is, we really try to spend it intentionally and make sure that, you know, there's space to talk to each other and also space to do some good stuff together. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a great office. <laughs> I am going to then jump to the timeline. Joni, if you want to. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, we've outlined the general uh, timeline for hiring. Uh, right now, the position is open until Friday, Central Standard Time, noon, um, Friday, November 3rd at the latest. Um, so get your application in as soon as you can, if you're interested and you feel like you're a great fit for the role. Uh, love to hear from you. We'll begin reviewing the resumes right away and then conduct initial interviews. The semi-finalist interviews will be through Zoom the week of November 27th. And then the finalist interviews will begin those the week of December 11th. And then our target start date is soon after those finalist interviews or as soon as possible, depending on the candidate. Awesome. Thanks, Joni. So we're going to jump into some frequently asked questions. Um, and um, since we know that there's a number of questions that people uh, generally ask, and since this is a pre-recorded webinar, we want to make sure that we can get some of these out there. Uh, so I'm going to start off with asking Carrie, um, why is this role available? Whoops, there we go. Um, yeah, so um, why this role is available. So it, the position itself isn't new, um, but the responsibilities are mostly new. So this proposition, um, an aspect of it has always provided administrative support for the team, but the focus on supporting our community engagement work is new for this role. Um, we've been doing community engagement um, as a foundation for a long time, so that isn't new. We just haven't had someone dedicated to helping us organize ourselves around that work. Um, so, 
you know, what I will say with that um, piece of it is there'll be some mushiness with this role as we live into it. And, and we know the things that we need to get done, um, but how that happens is going to be sub subject um, to whoever fills this role. So it's a great opportunity for someone who likes to learn as they go and can flex as things evolve. Awesome, thanks. Um, Stephanie, I'm gonna jump over to you and ask, can someone work remotely for this position? Great question. Um, you know, as I said early on, uh, we serve Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, and the 23 Native nations in that geography. Um, so because we are serving that region, all Bush Foundation staff have to live in the region. We really, we're a place-based foundation. It's really important that we have people in the communities that we serve. Um, the majority of the, our, our folks work out of our St. Paul office. And, and because the team that Carrie and Tammy, um, the comms team, they both live in the Twin Cities, our preference would be to have somebody um, in the Twin Cities so that that Wednesday that we're in the office, uh, we can see people regularly. Um, if you're interested, though, and you're in, you live elsewhere in the region, um, don't let that um, be a no. We would love to still hear from you and to talk about um, how that might work. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, and to close us out, I'm going to jump back to you, Carrie, and ask what it's like to be a part of the team. I'm sure a lot of people are curious about that, too. Thanks, Kim. I feel pressure with the last question. I'm just <laughs> um, so I, I love that we have a small team of three people. We can be super nimble um, and adept and flex as needed, which really serves the work um, that we do here really well. Also makes it easier to get to know each other um, and be more efficient um, as we do our work together. Tammy and I like to laugh a lot um, and we work hard. Um, we're pretty no-nonsense and encourage direct communication with each other um, and seek the same in a colleague. So um, also because of our work, we, we have a high degree of trust and respect for one another. Um, being a small team, we rely on each other to do our work well, um, both independently and as a group. Um, you know, comms is sort of a hub of foundation-wide activity, so we have lots to keep track of and move forward. Um, I will say we're pretty informal um, and there's structure. Um, and I think that's important to know. So um, I would say that also extends into the larger culture of the organization. Um, and I'll say something about that in a minute, um, but just an example of what I mean by structure within our team. So we have regular team meetings, we set an agenda and everyone contributes to that, but we can also toss it out the window. If something more pressing comes up that needs to be addressed. Um, that the team brings forward, or if we just have a good flow of conversation, we can let something go long and cover the rest later um, in some other form. So um, just give you a little bit of flavor of that. The other great thing about being on our team is that you get to work across the entire organization. Um, we have really great colleagues here at Bush. It's really fun and we're a, a values-based culture. Um, and we really do live by our operating values. It's not just window dressing. You see people doing this and living this in all of the different aspects of the work that they do. Um, and it's a that creates a place where you, um, where I will say, I, I feel um, that people really see you and welcome you for who you are and all of the talents that you bring to the organization. Um, so it, it, that's an amazing aspect of it. I will also say that we also aren't for everyone, just like any other organization. You know, we have a really highly collaborative way of working. And for some people, that might be more frustrating or confusing to navigate um, than other places that they've worked. And that's all good. Um, but we just want people to understand that about us. Um, and last that I will say is that um, what I love about us is that we are an incredibly inclusive um, culture and we're willing to adapt and to meet people's needs. But I also think it's important to understand that there is structure um, and there are expectations. We're a high performing team with a high degree of accountability um, among each other. So if those things sound like great ways um, that you like to work, then uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Awesome, thank you. And thank you all. That's all we have for today. Uh, thanks for joining us to learn more about this opportunity. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks, everybody. Bye.